Roth. Uh, when I have my ASCO hat on, I'm chair elect of the Communications Committee. Uh, in my day job, I'm a general urinary medical oncologist at Seitman Cancer Center at Washington University uh, in St. Louis. Uh, if you allow me time for just a couple of comments, um, I, I am honored to be able to uh, moderate this press conference, which includes the four, uh, four plenary papers, six papers overall, and I think you'll recognize uh, what a diverse uh, group of publications and uh, summaries of research that this represents. It's really actually a very nice microcosm of ASCO in general. Uh, we have industry-sponsored trials and federally funded um, trials. We have uh, trials of a designer drug. We have trials of uh, older drugs being used in a new fashion. We have international presenters. We have U.S. presenters. And so really uh, a pretty good representation of, of what we do for a living. Um, I'll say that you'll hear two themes during uh, this meeting. One is precision medicine and the other is quality of life. And I think the message from this, uh, present, this group of presentations is that those can go hand in hand. Uh, those aren't mutually exclusive. Uh, for example, we'll hear about uh, the ultimate precision medicine, uh, this new um, novel agent, uh, TDM1, uh, a novel antibody drug conjugate uh, which targets cancer cells. We'll also hear about targeting a particular population of patients that's likely to benefit from therapy in the oligodendroglial tumor study. Um, uh, quality of life, of course, we'll hear about the uh, indolent lymphoma study, which not only presents uh, data on a drug that provides superior efficacy, but also reduced toxicity. And then most importantly, uh, the best way to improve quality of life, of course, is not to administer a toxic drug to patients who are destined to not benefit from it. And so identifying patients who are likely to benefit versus not benefit is clearly a direction that we're taking uh, in terms of their molecular signatures, uh, molecular biomarkers, or their genomic signature. Uh, and so we'll hear more about that today. And then finally, um, to say that um, some of these trials have been going on for a prolonged period of time. Uh, we're dependent on federally funded research, um, and particularly the cooperative group trials that you'll hear about today. Uh, and I think the take-home message is that these trials would not have taken place without that funding, that no one else, else was going to sponsor those particular trials. And if you ask what's the effect of flat funding at the NCI, and particularly reduced funding for the cooperative groups, if you ask what would we lose, this is what we would lose. So the format today will be that all six presenters will give five-minute summaries of their uh, data. Then we'll take questions and answers. Uh, we'll cut about noon. Uh, there will be uh, uh, speakers and uh, some of the co-authors from those papers available for you on a one-on-one -on -one basis afterwards uh, in this room or in the press briefing room. Um, this is to remind you that uh, all research presented in today's press briefing <clears throat> is embargoed until 12.01 Eastern time on Sunday, June 3rd. So we will um, start with a presentation that I've personally been waiting for the results for for about 17 years, uh, written back when Dr. Hussein and I were significantly younger. Um, and this particular study uh, is entitled Intermittent Versus Continuous Androgen Deprivation in Hormone-Sensitive Metastatic Prostate Cancer Patients, results of Southwest Oncology Group 9346, Intergroup 0162, uh, an international phase three trial. Maha? Doctor, sorry, Dr. Hussein is Professor of Medicine and Urology at the University of Michigan Comprehensive Cancer Center in Ann Arbor. Thanks, Bruce. Um, and I can tell you he was a hunk when he was young. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I'm going to make one more remark. I know this is going to kill my time, but um, I will tell you, I have never been in a place where I have to, been taken so many pictures off, and it almost feels like I'm on the runway, all of us here. So uh, and you can understand what the Oscar people feel when they go. So uh, on behalf of all co-investigators, it really is my honor to be here today to summarize for you the result of um, SWOG 9346, which, as uh, Dr. Roth just pointed out, is an international uh, NCI-sponsored intergroup clinical trial evaluating intermittent versus continuous androgen deprivation in patients um, who had hormone-sensitive metastatic prostate cancer. Medical or surgical castration, or otherwise known as hormone treatment or androgen deprivation, is the standard therapy for patients with metastatic hormone-sensitive disease. Despite a high response rate, uh, most patients will end up progressing on hormone therapy to become castration-resistant. 
the historic median survival at the time we designed the trial was about two and a half to three years. And then earlier experimental laboratory evidence um, indicated that intermittent hormone treatment can in fact prolong the duration of disease response. And data from earlier clinical trials in the 1990s indicated the feasibility of doing intermittent treatment uh, and uh, the potential for improvements in um, side effects of treatment. This trial was designed having in mind that if you can give less treatment while maintaining or improving efficacy and potentially improving um, the side effect profile of the treatment, that this would be a very clinically important endpoint. And therefore, the study was designed to assess whether survival with intermittent hormone treatment was not inferior or said otherwise as comparable to continuous um, treatment. The design required that we rule out a relative increase in the risk of death of 20% or greater for the intermittent therapy as compared to continuous therapy with 95% confidence. The other co-primary endpoint was quality of life. Um, the, uh, we, I, we, will, we were happy to take some questions on this particular issue. This um, abstract will be presented on Monday um, in the uh, a prostate um, a poster discussion session, abstract 4571, but the focus of my presentation today is the survival endpoint. The eligible men were registered and were stratified based on um, prognostic important features, including functional status, the disease extent, whether it's minimal or um, extensive, and prior hormonal therapy. The study design is outlined here. Um, the eligible men were required to have newly diagnosed metastatic prostate cancer uh, that has, um, with a PSA of uh, five or greater. They were treated with seven months of hormone treatment that consisted of goserelin and bicalutamide. Men who achieved a PSA of four or lower uh, on months six and seven were randomly assigned to continue treatment with a combination of these two drugs or to stop uh, or to go to intermittent treatment. Men who went on the intermittent arm discontinued treatment and they were monitored clinically uh, and then monthly with PSAs. Therapy was resumed based on pre-specified criteria and I'm happy to explain later on uh, in the Q&A what, the, what these criteria were. 3,040 patients um, were enrolled between 1995 um, uh, and 2008, and I'm indeed glad that we are not in retirement and coming out of retirement to present the data, but it shows the importance of long-term follow-up on these trials. On the left um, side uh, pie chart is the um, accrual by cooperative groups. These men came from the United States, Canada, and um, uh, Europe through five cooperative groups. On the right-hand side is the racial distribution of this men. 63% uh, were white and 14% um, were African American. As I mentioned, the primary endpoint uh, was overall survival. Uh, the overall survival for patients treated on continuous therapy, the median survival was 5.8 years. The, inter the uh, median survival for men treated on the uh, intermittent therapy was 5.1 years. This represents about a 9% uh, relative increase in the risk of death. However, based on the confidence interval, remember what I mentioned earlier, that we had to be 95% comfortable that this is actually uh, not uh, representing anything more, 20% or more risk of death, we actually have not been able to demonstrate that because of the upper end of the confidence interval, and therefore we conclude that intermitt intermittent therapy is in fact inferior in this population overall. Uh, one thing I want to point out, uh, the trial took very long to, uh, to um, uh, mature, and part of the reason is here. As I mentioned to you earlier, the median survivals at the time we designed the trial uh, was about three years, which was, was expected. As you could see here, for the control arm, it practically doubled, and that required that we continue follow-up until 2008, and a bit more than that, to get the enough events uh, in terms of the, uh, the death to try to um, reach maturity. We performed secondary analyses to assess whether the treatment effect was in fact consistent across different subgroups of patients. We found um, in all except one case where the trends appear to favor 
combined uh, continuous, I'm sorry, androgen deprivation, except with regard to the disease extent. Highlighted here is the median survival for patients with extensive disease, which was 4.4 um, um, years for patients treated on continuous therapy versus five years uh, median for patients treated with intermittent therapy. And as you can see here, it, this treatment was, intermittent therapy was not inferior in this group of patients. On the other hand, um, the median survival for patients treated with intermittent therapy who had minimal disease was 5.2 years, which was significantly inferior to the seven years median survival for those who were treated with continuous therapy. Um, I should point out that these are secondary analyses, and therefore uh, one has to be careful in interpreting the data in that regard. However, we find really this finding rather striking and surprising because it goes against the conventional belief based on all the trials that have been done thus far with this uh, disease. In conclusion, in this international randomized phase three trial in patients with metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer, survival with intermittent hormone therapy was inferior to survival with continuous hormone therapy. Specifically, we did not rule out a relative increase in the risk of death of 20% or greater for intermittent as compared to continuous therapy with 95% confidence. Um, be because of these findings, continuous therapy continues to be the standard of care. In in a secondary analysis, intermittent hormone therapy was found to be not inferior to continuous therapy in patients who had extensive disease. Intermittent hormone therapy was significantly inferior to continuous therapy in patients with minimal disease. These observations certainly suggest potential inherent biological differences and warrant further evaluations. Thank you.